This is the Korean high school math exam from 2025, so it's their equivalent of the SATs, but much, much harder. <laughs> there are 30 problems in total, and we're going to look today at problem 22. This sequence of problem caught my eye, especially once I translated it uh, with the help of Google Gemini. Um, because the way the sequence is defined, the next term depends on whether the previous term is odd or even. Quite similar to the Collatz conjecture, which is a very famous unsolved number theory problem. Um, so I'm like curious, like how hard actually is this problem on this Korean high school math exam? So here's the whole translated problem. For all sequences a n, where all terms are integers and the following conditions are satisfied, find a sum of all possible values of uh, the magnitude of a1. So the first condition a defines a sequence where a n plus 1 is a n minus 3 if a n were odd, and half of a n if a n were 0 or even. And condition B, the smallest natural number m, for which absolute value of a m is equal to absolute value of a m plus 2, is 3. So it took me a while to get my head around what the second condition was saying, but I think I'll demonstrate it by way of example. So if we take a1, for example, if we just plug in a1 is equal to 1 and see what happens. So 1 is odd, so we subtract 3 to get the next term, which is negative 2. Negative 2 is even, so we half it to get the next term, negative 1. Odd again, subtract 3 to get uh, negative 4. Um, but here's where we have that second condition coming in. If we look at a1 and a3, they're actually equal in absolute value. So we're supposed to have a3 and a5 being equal in absolute value, but we're not supposed to have a1 and a3 being equal. So therefore, this sequence does not satisfy the conditions. Um, so we'll move on and try something else. We need to find the sequences that do satisfy both conditions. So if we try a1 is equal to 2, for example, 2 is even, divide by... 2 to get 1, subtract 3 to get negative 2. Um, and again, we've got this problem where the size of a1 is equal to the size of a3, so we've failed already. Let's keep going. When a1 is 3, it's odd. We subtract 3 to get 0. Okay, 0 divided by 2, 0 divided by 2, 0. We get a2 is equal to a4. This is not allowed to happen. So again, a1 is equal to 3, fails. Let's go for 4, divide by 2 to get 2, divide by 2 to get 1, subtract 3 to get negative 2. So we've seen this pattern 2, 1, negative 2 before. Um, but again, we can't have um, a2 and a4 being equal in absolute value. So 4 is no good, the sequence fails. If we look at 5, subtract 3 to get 2. Uh, again, we're going to get this 2, 1, negative 2, so fails again. Uh, when we try 6, divide by 2 to get 3, subtract 3 to get 0, divide by 2, 0, divide by 2, 0. Finally, we have one that works. Um, A3 and A5 are equal in absolute value. It was not the case for A1 or A2. So this sequence is the first one that actually meets both conditions. Uh, we might just do one more. So let's take A1 as 7, subtract 3 to get 4, divide by 2 to get 2. Uh, we're going to get a 2, 1, negative 2 pattern again. Uh, this is good. Again, this is really good. So A3 and A5 are, are both have an absolute value of 2. So this also passes the test. So, so far we have two sequences that work, uh, in which case A1 could be 6 or 7. I want to find all possible values. So let's start thinking about this uh, algebraically. We want a m uh, to be equal to, in absolute value to a m plus 2. So let's think about how we can express a m plus 2 in terms of a m. Well, to start with, we can express it in terms of a m plus 1. Um, so it's either going to be a m plus 1 minus 3 if a m plus 1 is odd, or if a m plus 1 were even, it's going to be half of a m plus 1. And then we want to take each of those cases and then go one step further to express it in terms of AM. So can we split up the first case into two cases? Well, okay, AM plus 1 could be AM minus 3, but that would only happen if AM were odd. Now, if AM plus 1 were odd, AM cannot be odd because they're going to have a difference of three. One of them is going to be odd and one of them is going to be even. So actually that case is never going to happen. So if AM plus one is odd, actually um, AM must have been even. So we're going to have a half of AM minus three. Now for the second case, uh, half of AM plus one, well, this one could have been AM minus three if uh, AM were even and AM plus one were odd. 
but it could also have been half of half of AM, which is a quarter of AM, if they were both even. So now we have three cases or three ways to express AM plus two in terms of AM. Um, but we want these to be equal in absolute value. So let's just get rid of the subscripts and, and call them both A. We want to solve this equation. This is for the first case. Um, getting rid of the absolute value sign, we can have plus minus A is equal to half A minus three. We get two cases. So solving each of these linear equations separately, I'm um, going to get two possible values for A. One of them is A equals negative six. And the other one is A is equal to two. Okay, good. So let's do a similar thing for the second case. Um, we'll have absolute value of A is equal to a half absolute value of A minus three. Again, solving two linear equations gives us two cases. A could be negative three or A could be positive one. Finally, in the third case, absolute value of A should be a quarter of absolute value of A. Uh, that's only gonna have one solution, which is A is equal to zero. All right, so we've got five possibilities here. Um, and these are possible values of A3 if absolute value of A3 were equal to absolute value of A5. And now what we want to do is find, for all possible sequences, find the possible values of A1. So we need to work backwards a couple of terms. So for example, if A3 were equal to negative 6, what could A2 have been? Well, we could have halved. If A2 were even, we could have halved. So working backwards, we double to get negative 12. Or working backwards um, from the other case, we add 3 to get negative 3. So we have two possible values for A2 if A3 were negative 6. Going back one more step, um, so we double negative 12 to get negative 24, or add 3 to get negative 9. From negative 3, we can double to get negative 6. Uh, if we added 3, we'd get 0. But 0 is not odd, and we would have only subtracted 3 uh, if A1 were odd. So that case is not, never going to happen. Continuing in a similar way from uh, 2, double to get 4, or add 3 to get 5. Uh, back to A1, double to get 8, add 3 to get 7. Or from 5, double to get 10. Again, we're not going to add 3 because 8 is even. We wouldn't have subtracted 3 from there. Okay, we can work backwards in a similar way um, from these three cases to get some more possible values for A1. It's a lot of cases, but not all of these are going to work because not only do we have to have A3 being equal to A5 in absolute value, we could not have A2 being equal to A4 or A1 being equal to A3. For example, if we look at this four here, um, that actually didn't work. We already tried that case above when A1 was equal to four, we had A2 and A4 being equal in absolute values. That actually failed. So we need to rule out those cases where we've already like failed before we get to A3. So which one's those going to be? Well, we need to look for those values of A2 or A1 where they're one of these values, like negative 6, 2, negative 3, 1, or 0, because those are the ones where we have that value. The term two terms later is going to be the same in absolute value. So this 2 here, if that were A2, then A2 is going to be equal to A4. So we can rule out anything here, 2, 4, or 5. Uh, similarly, this negative 3 here would mean that A2 would be equal to A4. So that fails. We don't need to go down that track. Once we've ruled those out, we're just left with these six options for A1, sum the absolute values, and we get 64. So there we are. Really nice problem. Uh, really hard. I wouldn't want to be doing that in my high school final exam. I'll put a link to the whole paper in the whole description below. Um, unless you read Korean, you probably have to find a way to translate it. But that's one thing a large language models are pretty good at.